You're listening to the Thomas Talks Podcast. Welcome to Thomas Talks Podcast, where we talk about anything and everything school buses. I'm your host, Tom Zelke from Daimler Trucks North America. Happy to be with you today. And joining me, Mr. Jed Ruth, Vice President of Sales, Service, and Marketing for Thomas Built Buses, and Mr. Mark Childers, Powertrain and Technology Sales Manager at Thomas Build Buses. On today's podcast, we'll be talking about the total cost of ownership of running newer diesel engines. We'll dive into how fleets are finding savings through new diesel engines throughout the entire time that they own the bus. So let's get started. I've heard that diesel provides the lowest total cost of ownership, or TCO, over the life of the bus. Can you talk more about TCO and what elements are going into this equation? Yes, I'm sure our listeners are pretty familiar with this, but basically you just take the initial purchase price, right? And then you add the cost of, of fuel and or death, and then you add the cost of, of maintenance to that, and then subtract the resale value and divide it by the number of years you run it, and that's your total cost of ownership per year. Um, and so I think diesel really excels in, in, in two of those, uh, and depending on how you're who you're competing against three of those. So certainly in, um, it excels in, in fuel economy, it excels in, um, it excels in resale value and, and it excels in maintenance. And so, um, and Mark can kind of go into more of, of those, of those details, but it really is, um, this particularly with new, newer diesel engines, you really get advantages in all of those, in all of those areas. Yeah, Jed, thanks uh, for that introduction. I think you're, you're right. There are so many, um, you know, so many factors that go into a TCO for a customer. Uh, for, for a school bus customer that we work with, um, there are all kinds of, there's a wide range of, of customers who, who look at TCO. They can look at it, as you said, you know, at a very narrow um, focus, or they can look at a very broad focus. And we try to work with our customers who have both of those uh, uh, views of TCO. And when you look at TCO and diesel and how it compares, we first begin with one of the tools that we really like to use and encourage is, is a tool that's put out there by the Department of Energy that is a comparison tool called uh, a fleet tool. And we're happy to provide that link if anyone wants to go out on the web. If you just go out and search A Fleet, A F L E E T, you'll find it on the Department of Energy website. And we've taken that tool, and it's a very robust tool uh, for TCO, and it's got lots of calculations in it, but it can be kind of simplified so that you can look at it from a fleet services standpoint and really take a look at the various types of fuel. So it's going to look at diesel, gasoline, propane, electric, CNG. Uh, those are the five fuel types that are in that, in that TCO model. And when you look at, as Jed said, you look at fuel economy, maintenance. So these are the large categories that we really kind of look at. Maintenance um, and uh, resale value and you know, obviously the, the capital cost as well in terms of operating that vehicle over say 15 years. Uh, diesel is a very, very competitive uh, product in the TCO model uh, in terms of that. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about that maybe a little bit later on, but there's some, there's some key areas around that TCO model that we, we, would, we, uh, we see customers always asking fuel, maintenance, resale value. Those are the big categories. Thanks, Mark. We talked about different fuels, but let's look at total cost of ownership with a new diesel engine compared to alternative fuels or gasoline powered. Sure. So as, as we were just talking around the TCO model, um, when you look at those, those fuel categories, fuel types, a diesel engine over, say, a 15-year period roughly has a total cost of ownership today of somewhere around $298,000. That's kind of where we, we kind of see a, a diesel. And then if you look at a gasoline, its total cost is somewhere around $331,000. And then if you look at propane, it's around three twenty nine dollars um, in terms of just overall operating cost. And again, you know, we're looking at fuel consumption 
those go into that calculation because, as Jed, we talked about earlier in our podcast, uh, fuel economy is an important component of total cost of ownership. So with diesels, you have a, a, a better performance on fuel economy compared to the other types of fuels that I just mentioned. So that's a huge um, factor in the TCO. And then when you talk about uh, overall maintenance into it, um, that comes into play in, in total cost of ownership to help drive down those costs. And the technology is getting better today. Um, engine manufacturing has is, is improved vastly over the years. Uh, components that are on diesel vehicles are improved, gaining efficiency, gaining robustness, and their ability to last longer for our customers. And that helps drive down that TCO cost for our customers. You know, Mark, you talked about fuel economy, but can you deep dive a little bit about the Detroit DD5 and DD8 when it comes to TCO and fuel economy? I can I can take that one. Um, so the I think you got to kind of understand two things about a diesel engine and fuel economy. I mean, first is just the fuel itself. Um, a gallon of diesel is about 12, 13% more energy content than a, a gallon of gas. Um, and then it's more like 35, 36% um, more energy content than an equivalent unit of propane. So the fuel itself, before you even start, I mean, if you go look at the pump and you see diesel is just a little bit more than, than gasoline at the pump, that's not always true. It's usually true. Some of that's just it's worth more, right? There's more energy content in the fuel itself. And then the the, the way a diesel engine operates, that low RPM, it's just more a more efficient engine, especially for our, uh, our duty cycle. So you're going to get better fuel economy from a diesel than a gas just by, just by default, just by the nature of the two engines. But I think where Detroit really excels is in that area. So we've had another podcast, we've talked about it, but we now have enough data, we can be really, really comfortable that that engine excels in fuel economy. And we're seeing you know, 10 to 15% better fuel economy than competitive diesel engines or than your older fleet. It's probably even better in your older fleet because everybody's fuel economy has gotten better through the years. Um, and then when you compare it to other fuel types and other engine types, you kind of see those two things I talked about before, the nature of the fuel, the nature of the engine. And you get up to the fact that you're, uh, you're running, you know, 50, 60% percent more fuel economy in a diesel engine. And the thing I think I always talk about that um, I don't really, maybe I'm not smart enough to know this, but but the the, the real impact, but you're just running fewer gallons of, of fuel through the vehicle itself. That has to be better for the overall sustainability of the fuel. So, um, and for the environment. So, so there's just that, that nature of the beast advantage that diesel has that I don't think we can forget. And the DD5 has in space. I've heard that maintenance intervals for the DD5 and DD8 engines are the longest in their class. Explain that and how does it impact TCO? Yeah, that's a that's a great observation, Tom, around um, another factor in that TCO model, and that is the maintenance side of these of these engines. And um, when you when Detroit launched the DD5 and DD8 into North America. Uh, it was a very purposeful launch for this industry and for the product because a lot of research and development had gone into how do we extend the maintenance intervals and lower our customers' cost of ownership. And so with that, there's things in the design of that engine that kind of stack up to kind of deliver that longer interval that I'll share with you in a minute. So for example, um, you know, in that engine block, there are additional lubricating ports that were designed into the block. Uh, the rigidity of the block, again, kind of gets us to a longer life of the vehicle uh, to kind of extend that engine uh, life so that customers can operate it for a longer period of time and lower their cost over 15, 20, 25 years. So that's just some of the basics there. And then also in there in the design was, uh, you know, concerns or questions around, you know, the fuel and just the how often would you have to change that fuel? I mean, the, the, 
the oil intervals in terms of how often would you have to change oil intervals on the vehicles. So with that, all of these things kind of stack up to deliver the best in class, as you said, intervals. So today on the DD5 and the duty applications for a school bus, uh, oil change intervals is at 35,000 miles. And if you think about that in terms of perspective, a school bus you know, will probably range between 12 and 15,000 miles a year in terms of its actual miles that it travels. So, you know, conceivably, you know, based on that, you, you could say, oh, you only have to change the oil in a, in a vehicle every two years. That in math, you could, but there are other things that we want to, you know, we have to take into consideration in that. And that is, you know, the, the, the routes that the vehicle's on, those types of things. So, um, but yes, with, with that, that is the extended life of the vehicle and the mileage intervals is 35,000 miles. There's other things like lashing of the valves. They're up to 70,000 miles. That's another high maintenance piece of it. And then probably one of the other highest maintenance pieces of a diesel vehicle in terms of, of maintenance in a TCO model is how do you deal with after treatment systems? So it's not only is it the engine, but you also have this after treatment. And in that after treatment system, you have your, your diesel particulate filter. And part of that TCO model from Detroit's perspective was they introduced variable cam phasing into the design of the engine. And variable cam phasing is looking to how do we reduce the maintenance on a diesel particulate filter. So in, in a real brief summary here, what they did is they used variable cam phasing to increase the exhaust temperatures on the engine so that we keep those exhaust temperatures high in the after treatment system. The reason we want our temperatures high in the after treatment system is so that we burn off any of that emissions and we keep a very um, low maintenance after treatment system on a diesel bus. And so that was kind of the design and the purpose of uh, the DD5 and DD8 was to say, how do we look at not only the engine, we want to increase that uh, life of the vehicle, we want to reduce the maintenance cycles on the engine, but we also want to have to be able to deal with other systems on this vehicle, like after treatment systems, to help lower, lower our customers' cost. So it's a lot of uh, a lot of information around that, um, you know, in terms of the maintenance intervals. All of those things come down to a point where, you know, we want to reduce, we want to reduce the, you know, the, the cost of having to maintain a diesel engine. And with Detroit and the design that they delivered in the DD5 and the DD8, they really, uh, they really knocked it out of the park with this vehicle. Um, we've we've had great performance out of it, and it is reducing costs not only from a fuel economy standpoint, but also from a maintenance standpoint with those extended intervals in maintenance. Well, with that best in class TCO that you described, Mark, what about resale value? Should customers consider the resale value of their new bus purchases? Sure, it's part. It's part of TCO. It's, it's the part. I think your 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 question indicates sometimes it gets ignored, and I think you're right. But and there's a ton of things that go into it. But I think there's there's three really big ones that um that people would need to consider. And, and one is you know obviously what's the market for my bus when I'm done with it. Number two is what you know is there an infrastructure behind it that that can that, that will support a bus that's older. Um, and then it's just what's it you know what's it worth? And so the um, in the in the market itself. So I think that that first one is where I think you really have to be careful with alternative fuels because um, I think there is going to be a market for a gasoline engine. There's going to be a market for for a diesel engine. But alternative fuels are um, they're tougher. There's just not the wide opportunity to sell. Not everybody has the infrastructure needed. So your market shrinks, and when your market shrinks. Uh, you're, you're not going to get as much value. And then I think that the second thing is, hey, for the customer, um, when, I, when I sell this thing, can my buyer expect for it to, to run? I mean, you know, how long can they expect? I think that's where a Detroit Diesel just excels. So, 
you, you know, a school bus is going to go in its lifetime, depending on the state and the route, you know, between 100 and 250,000 miles is a, is a typical number. And 250 is high, right? So, um, so that Detroit has a B10 life, and a B10 life is the point at which 10% either fail or, or have to be rebuilt or 400,000 miles. So a customer at the end of a life of a Detroit diesel should say, yeah, I can count on that thing for a significantly longer period of time, which should up that resale value. And then finally, there's the support behind it. And I think in the, regardless of the diesel engine that, that you buy today, you can be confident that the companies that manufacture those are gonna have a support network. And then there's just gonna be that aftermarket network as, as well that's out there because there's been so many of these built. So, you know, the school bus industry is a little unique I mean, we have more fuel types available than some of the other industries um, that, that are like us, but um, you gotta remember that diesel engine goes into a lot of vehicles and a lot of different in industries and they're gonna be supported for a long time. So I think with, with a diesel school bus, you can count on resale value later. Yeah, Tom, I'd, I'd add to what Jed just mentioned there. It's a great point, Jed. You mentioned the support for the diesel. And through our Thomas Built Bus dealer network in North America and Canada, uh, we have you know the finest dealers in the in the country, and they are absolutely committed to supporting uh, the Detroit product and all of our products uh, through a Thomas brand. And you know they are equipped with technicians, uh, they're equipped with uh, support uh, on this, and I think that's another piece of that when someone looks at. Okay, what's the value of the, as Jed said, what's the value of this product in the aftermarket or the secondary market, second use life? And that's a very important piece that, as Jed said, often may be overlooked. And so I believe that we have, with the Detroit brand and our dealer network here in North America, we have a fantastic organization that can support that and can bring additional value to um, you know, our diesel products that are going to be sold in the secondary life. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much. This concludes our podcast today, and we look forward to the next Thomas Talks podcast. Thank you.